the Christmas light show, uh, the, the pageant of lights in 1956. Every year he would add something from Frosty to to E.T. later on, and that just that's a that's a that's a real Philadelphia tradition. Not then we can talk about the Crystal Tea Room too, but I think that kind of gives you the idea. Another big event was to be taken to lunch in the Crystal Tea Room. Back in the day, um, tea sandwiches, enormous chandeliers, chicken salad, tomato aspic, and ladies who lunch in their suits wearing those fur wraps around them that I remember from oh my grandmother's day. Women would wear them and they, were, they had the little animal heads on them the real thing. Um, I really love the Crystal Tea Room on the 12th floor. Um, I was up there, you know, you can go up anytime to eat, but I was there with my daughter uh, to have breakfast with Santa. And then we'd usually go have lunch at the Crystal Tea Room, which uh, was probably the most elegant dining facility in Philadelphia, or certainly one of them. And it was a real treat, a real thrill to eat in this magnificent room. And we were young, pretty young, my brother was younger than me. And we do, uh, always try to be on our best behavior in the dining room there because it was so elegant and we wanted, didn't want to embarrass our mother or we wanted to make sure we could come back there again. You just, you really felt grown up when you went to the Crystal, crystal Tea Room. Uh, it was beautiful, the service was wonderful. Um, the tea was wonderful. I guess it was just the whole thing was great. It was a good experience. You go to one of the pillars, and he has one of his slogans there. Um, Let those who follow me continue in the blah, blah, blah. And even as a kid, I would look at that, and I felt like my eyes would almost well up in tears because it just seemed so righteous and just so, you know, who talks like that anymore, has those kind of principles. So on her last day of her employment at John Wanamaker's, it was a tradition, if you were going to get married, they would play the wedding march at 4 o'clock, and that would be in honor of the bride on the beautiful pipe organ that is still there in the building, and you would stand, the bride would stand very near the organ, but up on the mezzanine so that everybody could look up and see who was going to be married. So her very last day at Wanamaker's was listening to the wedding march, and then she marched off and married my father, and the rest is history. And my daughter's dresses that I bought from there, every time she come to church on Sunday, they said, you dress your daughter so nice. She dressed your daughter so nice. Everybody always said that. And all her dresses came from Wanamaker's upstairs and in the basement. I decided to go over to Wanamaker's, which then had a huge book department on the ground floor, and see if my book was there. So I went over. I actually found a couple of copies of the book being displayed. So I lurked a little while. and. Um, Lo and behold, a woman, what looked like a woman and her daughter came up, and I don't remember if they went to the book straight off or if they kind of found it or what happened. But at any rate, they picked it up uh, and took it to the cash register and bought it. I will forever love Wanamaker's for that supremely happy hour in the dear departed book department. They, and they created this whole feeling where you would walk in the door and you felt like you were in fairyland, you know, even though it was a department store. <laughs> Somehow they, they created a piece of art. And I think for its time, the light show was art. I don't think that the, the department store that we knew at this time uh, of this time can exist today because you need such a strong labor force in order to carry out the service policies. Wanamaker's, as it is today, not as great, not as elegant, but it's still Wanamaker's as compared to the stores that you find in the shopping centers. and it, It's just not the same. We love Wanamaker's. I miss Wanamaker's, and I can't, you just can't replicate it. You just can't. I don't care what store uh, takes over that building, it's always going to be looked upon as the Wanamaker building. It has those big emblems around there on Penn Square uh, that says that the Wanamaker building. And I think it's a landmark. Because it was the most elegant department store, and because of the organ and the crystal tea room, and 
and shopping there was was uh, it was just a, the in place for people to to come in town to visit. The, the real character that the store had, I don't think. I think we've lost a lot of that. Uh, I think that there is a, a similarity. So many shops, and particularly the mall mentality. Um, we don't have the distinctive character in stores that, that we used to and that I associate with Wanamaker's. Majestic, palatial, comfortable to be in, uh, just for the people. It's a place where people socialized. You spent the day at Wanamaker's, you had no reason to leave. You could say that about the other stores, but that's where you went for the special occasion. You went.